Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and if you're new here, this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and I also put out regular tutorials on either things that people have asked me about or something that I've noticed during my knitting that I've been doing. So it's Thursday the 9th of November and I'm recording here from Sydney, Australia. Um, apart from doing a lot of knitting, I'm also a high school math teacher and I teach classes at my local yarn store, Skein Sisters. Right, so I'm going to get into my first segment today is Friend from the Vault and that's where I um, show something that I've knit previously and what I have to show today is New Leaf by Jennifer Steingass. So uh, for this pattern I knit the smallest size which was a 35, I think 35.25, so 35 and a quarter inch but my gauge was a bit smaller. The pattern gauge was 22 stitches and I was getting 24 stitches so it ended up right on 32 inches for me um, which works for me my bust size is 32 inches so that was zero ease which is what I, what I quite like for this kind of top so it's um you can knit it as a sweater but I chose to knit it as a short sleeve top I used Brooklyn Tweed Peary in the colorway Driftwood and I used just under four skeins of that so that was the base yarn and I also used Spin Cycle Yarns Shades of Earth. So that Spin Cycle dyed in the wool and um, I'm trying to think, I used just over half a skein for that. So it was, you know, it was top down pattern. A lot of Jennifer's patterns have sort of a, like a rolled neckline, which isn't normally like my favorite kind of neckline treatment, but I think it works okay for this top. Um, there are some short rows in the back, um, but not a lot. And yeah, it was a really a very quick and, and pretty easy knit. I knit it about 11 inches from the underarm down. So like it's pretty, um, pretty fitted, um, you know, like in terms of where the, the yoke, that's my underarm up there. So it's pretty close there, but it's not uncomfortable. And yeah, it's totally fine. Like I'm wearing it with, that's my um, navel right there. So there's a bit of a bit of length it works well with high-waisted but also with sort of medium waisted either skirts or jeans or whatever and it is something that I can wear to work with sort of dressy pants or a dressy skirt and yeah I really like it I re I've knit a number of Jennifer Steingass's patterns I really like them they're well written she hasn't released any new designs in nearly two years so, you know, you worry about people, you hope she's okay, maybe her life has just gone in a different direction, but she didn't sort of officially say I'm, at least as far as I'm aware, I'm not designing anymore or I'm, I've taken up another interest. She just sort of stopped designing and stopped posting. So she's got beautiful patterns um, and, you know, I haven't certainly haven't knit all of them. I've knit quite a few, but there's quite a lot for me to work through. But I guess it's, it's more just, you know, you worry for people. You're like, I wonder what, I wonder what happened. Anyway, hopefully she's okay and maybe she'll come back to designing later. Right, so that's my friend from the vault. I can't remember when I actually knit this few years ago now. Um, oh, I think I will say the Brooklyn Tweed Peary, it's it's okay. I don't hate it and I don't love it. It's, it's quite sort of spongy. It's sort of a funny feel, but it's not horrible. It's certainly not itchy, not even a little bit itchy. This is right next to my skin not itchy at all so I'm sure there's worse yarns than that but I don't know I just I never knit with it again it has you know quite nice stitch definition um but you know it's not cheap and I guess there are other lot of it just didn't wow me and there are other yarns that do wow me so it's fine I've got nothing against the yarn I just didn't didn't love it and haven't sort of been maybe it's the colors too this one's obviously quite fine for a base for this sweater but um or this top but yeah Anyway, so that's New Leaf by Jennifer Steingass. So uh, this week I do have one finished object and I have four other, no, five other works in progress. So I'm just gonna get changed and I'll show you my finished object. So my finished object this week is Exploration Station by Stephen West. So I'm just gonna hold it up here so you can see it. Its wingspan is about my wingspan, which is uh, I think about 61 inches, that's about how, 61, 62 inches, something like that, close enough. 
and yeah I'm really delighted with it I love the colors I think it works really beautiful beautifully with just like a white um, a white top I'll show you the um, the colors so it, this has actually taken me four and a half months so I've been showing this quite a while um, so sorry but last time um, the edging is gra Tosh Merino light in the colorway graphite and you can see that it's kind of a yellowy um, a yellowy uh, gray and but I think that works really nicely with the other yarns and I've got Tosh Merino light neon peach here and then antler which is this one here and the last one um, is Swiss yarns in like an apricotty colorway that I use to try to mimic Stephen's reindeer so I'll put a picture of um, Stephen's up here and then mine and you can see that I really pretty much copied exactly Stephen's and I really liked his and I tried a couple of other colors like a, a bluey a bluey one instead of this apricot and I just didn't love it so and oh, I think I also tried like a navy instead of the the dark gray and yeah really really happy with it so I'll just I'm not great at styling these I don't usually wear them like that usually I put it like a third a third of the way down and then I just move it all the way around like that so that the two ends are about the same length I mean, that is a lot of fabric up at the neck, but that's all right, I get cold at the neck, so I really like it. So yeah, really happy. The, um, the only thing that was different for me, like literally the only thing, I knit this exactly to pattern, except I didn't quite have enough of the graphite. And I, so out of all of those ridges, I did one less ridge. I was a bit worried. I had nine grams left when I started the I-cord bind off. And I, you know, I went looking through everyone's projects to see had anyone mentioned how much yarn they'd used. Because I, I don't know, I was completely deluded. I thought I might actually be get, able to get another pass, like another there and back. So I was using two grams per row and I had nine grams left. So I was thinking, oh, I wonder if five grams is enough for the I-cord bind off. No way. It took eight grams. So I only had one. This is all I have left. That, that's it. So there's no way I was going to get... An extra there and back so I'll put that on my project page that it used I think I already did used eight grams of yarn because I think that can be really helpful at the end if you're just playing yarn chicken to just know that like for me it was two pretty much two grams every row and the bind off took eight grams so four times as much now I was expecting about three times because you have to knit every stitch three times because you sort of knit two knit two together and then put it all back and then knit two knit two together put all those stitches back so every stitch is getting worked three three times in the bind off so I thought oh maybe it'll be about three times the yarn but then you've also got the yarn that that carries for the I cord when you put those three stitches back the yarn isn't sitting right at the needle tip it's three stitches back so you've got that bit of carry so that plus the you know every stitch being worked three times it's about four times the amount of yarn for a row. So, yep, delight. Oh, the only other thing that I'll just mention, I'll be you know completely honest. In the brioche section, I made a couple of little boo boos where the this this yarn was tracking over, especially on the edge. I was fine for the rest of the body, but just on the edge, I had like one of these apricotty yarns coming over the pink, and so I just duplicate stitched. So I don't think you can see there and I don't I don't know which side it was on but oh maybe you can there hmm anyway there's one there there's one little sneaky blip where I um I, there was another one down here which I covered and then there's one if I could be bothered I'd go back and duplicate stitch I've got plenty of neon peach so yep I finally finished it so happy yes so it's a great I mean that's just I love having something really warm and squishy around my neck and um, yes, so this is perfect. And I actually already wore it out the other night and someone was like, oh, yes, that's a lovely shawl, lovely colours to wear with a white shirt. And I thought, yes, yes, they are nice and bright, really lovely accent. So, um, yep, that's Exploration Station by Stephen West. It weighs 196 grams and I'll put down um, the amounts that I used. Uh, I used pretty much all of the, and I did, when I blocked it, I just, can you see I've actually got like little points there. Uh, I did just, I didn't like pin anywhere else except I pinned out the points on the chevrons. That's the only, and I didn't like aggressively pin it. I just sort of pinned it so that they would look, there would be that kind of 
chevron look. So yes, so that's Exploration Station. Right, so I'm on to my works in progress. I thought I'll just mention what I've got on the needles and then I'll get changed because I've made quite a bit of progress actually. So I've got still two summer tops on the needles. I've got two sweaters and one scarf and I was very good and I did not cast on anything new this week, but I probably will um, because one of my works in progress is almost finished. So my first work in progress is the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit and I'm knitting the size extra small, which is a 33 and a half inch bust size. But because my gauge is a bit smaller, the yarn's a little bit lighter and I'm using a 3.5 mil instead of a four millimeter needle. So instead of getting 33 and a half inches, it's turning out to be about 28, 29 inches because my gauge is about 23 stitches over four inches instead of 20. So significantly um, tighter. I was originally thinking of having it a little bit looser than this, but I think I actually think it works. My next one that I make, I'll do a lot, a little bit larger and a bit drapier. But for this one, I'm quite happy to have it um, pretty fitted. So I have finished the body, and it's um, you know it's not cropped or anything, but it's not long. I'm trying to knit my projects at a sort of you know like more like 11 inches from the underarm. I used to knit them like 15 inches, like crazy long, but 11 inches feels quite good where it just, so there's, I could, I don't know if I could really tell, I haven't blocked it yet, I should say. I blocked it like up here and I haven't blocked it since. So, um, I mean, this actually pulls down quite a bit. So if I want it down a bit lower, I can. Um, you can see I've still got the sleeves to go. So I've only just finished the, um, the ribbing on the bottom. What did I do differently? I did heaps of things differently. Um, I've knit the one by one ribbing inside out. I've added short rows to the back, just two in each of these three sections, there, there, and there. I'll, next time I'll add one there as well, make it eight, eight rows. You can see there's a few, that actually is just like a, a change from the ribbing to the stockinette. So, but you can see here, I mentioned last week, there's a few spots where I did the short rows where I'm going to have to go back and duplicate stitch. I think this yarn is a 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. Just doesn't have the same stretch as wool. And when you do the short rows, they just don't come out, you know, exactly as you would want. Um, you know, that's visible, right? You don't want them to be visible. So I will, um, and I'll, I'll take a video of that. Someone asked me to video when I do the duplicate stitch, so I'll definitely do that. Um, I do that a lot. Like I, I do that wherever I sort of notice something that doesn't look quite as tidy as I might like it. Um, I'll just get some of the, you know, just a scrap of yarn and go in and then just weave in the ends. Otherwise, and it's honestly, no one would even know. So, which is, you know, the goal, right? It has to look like that is visible. You won't even notice it after I've, um, yeah, you won't see it at all, but I can see it like from here. I can see it in the camera. I can see one here and here and here. Um, yeah, so I'll definitely fix that. Let me think, what else? Um, I, what else did I do? I did, I did the ribbing down here inside out as well. I just did a long tail cast on and a normal one by one bind off, um, you know, that sort of, I didn't really feel like doing a tubular one, but now I've got another tubular one that I'm ha happy with like because this I'm really happy with the height of this neckline it's not up too high and it's not you know down here so um, the long tail cast on worked well for this but I'm going to try a different one um, I'm going to try the Judy's Magic cast on tubular cast on for the next one that I do of this uh, is there anything else that I wanted to say about this so this I'm doing this as part of the knit along with Kim and Jonna for petite knits and yes I'm like I, I think this is really nice pattern. It's um, needs a like it needs a bit of a block. Um, I think I sort of blocked it part way, but you know I've been trying it on a bit. And yeah, short sleeves. I don't know how long yet. Um, probably not super long. Probably just you know like cap sleeves. I'd say like I don't want it. Not like my um, cumulus where the sleeves are down here. I think I'll keep them pretty short. Maybe like the same kind of length as my new leaf. Just like maybe five or six rows bit of ribbing and then bind off. So this, I think this one will be done next week. So yay. Uh, my next work in progress is the Soho Top. So I'm knitting the Soho Top by Kadri and I'm using Pearl Soho Sweetgrass in the colorway Rye Flower, which is the recommended yarn for the pattern. 
I am knitting it um, flat instead of um, in the round from the body down because I just didn't want to do garter in the round. And what have I done? I did one extra stitch for each of the, it's very messy, it's been like all crumpled, it's been in a bag. This is the, I don't know if this is the back or the front because I'm doing them the same. And I did one extra stitch for the straps and I think other than that, um, yeah, I don't think I did anything else different. And so I'm gonna, that's, I don't know whether that's the front or the back. I haven't finished that, I've just sort of stopped it. And then I'm doing the other half. That's, I don't think I'd even start, sorry about the needles. I don't think I'd even started this last time. Um, that's as far as I've got. So I'm at the point where I'm just knitting down the body, straight down. And when I get to, because I've got three balls, so these two I'm holding together. With this one, I'm knitting from the inside and the outside. And I think I'm probably gonna get to a point where I actually completely run out of this ball. So maybe at that point, then I might put the two together and do the I-cord neckline and then just sort of work out like, then I'll probably block it at that point and figure out length because it's really hard to tell even with a swatch, just how much it's going to, the whole thing is gonna grow in the body with the garter because garter does have a tendency to stretch. It's pretty dense. So I'm using the recommended needle size, um, which is a four, four millimeter needle, but it is, um, I still think it's gonna stretch a little bit. So I'm knitting the extra small, which is a bust circumference of 30 inches. Um, I think it's gonna stretch out a little bit. So even though I'm using like the recommended yard, yarn, I think it will probably, oh, I might finish up around, might finish up around 30 inches, but it feels like when I measure it across, it's, it's actually 16 inches across. So that would put it at 32. Um, then, you know, take out a little bit with the seam. I don't know, I think it's gonna end up 32. We'll see, I'll report back as to how big it actually ends up. Um, but yes, making good, and that's at a point now where I'm just knitting back and forth, so that's nice and easy. So that is um, the Soho Top by Kadri. Is there anything else I want to say? No, I think that's it. Okay, so my two other works in progress are Pink Velvet and the Field Sweater. My third work in progress is Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry, and I'm using Volmeyer's Twin in the colorway Feldmouse, and the contrast yarn is the one that's recommended in the pattern, which is Ching Fibers Melted Suri in the colorway Pink Lemonade. I am using, I think I'm on gauge, which is 24 stitches over four inches, and I'm using, I think the recommended needle size, you know, I'm not sure if it's, it is actually, but I'm using a 3.5 millimeter needle and I'm on gauge and I'm knitting the size one, which is the 32 inch size. So that's, and it is turning out 32 inches. So, um, cause I am on gauge and I just measured it's 32 inches, which is great. That's no ease, which I'm happy about. Um, I have, I finished the body and I'm working my way down one sleeve. Sometimes I go up a needle size when I'm magic looping. I didn't in this case, I probably could have, I can feel, and I can see it's a little bit tighter, but I mean, this has been blocked. This hasn't been blocked. Um, it might stretch out a little bit, but it often stays a little bit snugger. So I, it's okay. Like if this was feeling tight on my arm, I would rip it back because I don't like things being tight on my, um, on my arms, but it's actually fine. And I think, um, but I'm just not doing any increases at all. So this is, I'm knitting straight down. I will knit straight down. I've mentioned in a previous episode that my arms do not really come down very much until about the wrist. So I'm pretty much the same, almost exactly the same size all the way until about here. So I will just knit straight until about here and then I'll see how I go. I might just do a few gradual decreases um, before I do the, the ribbing for this sleeve. And I've got a, a stitch marker in here just so I can count exactly how many rows before until I start the decreases and then I'll do exactly the same for the other sleeve. Um, so I've still, if you saw last week's video, I've got this, just this issue with the neck and that it, it, nothing wrong with the style. It, it looks lovely. Um, it's got some short rows in the back. I think it looks quite elegant as it is, um, but I'm just have been a bit concerned about it um, sort of moving further down my arms, my shoulders, and then being quite cold on the back of my neck, which I don't like. So I've been thinking about um, 
doing a few different you know techniques to try to stabilize it whether a crochet you know a crochet chain on the inside but I've already picked up these stitches on a needle and somebody recommended I'm sorry I can't remember who it was but they said just they said they'd seen somewhere someone else doing this and then just knitting up and not actually cutting off this ribbing at all and just letting it sit on the inside either either that folded that way or just be, like behind um, and I thought gosh that sounds really interesting I'm curious to try it and given that I already have this on the needle like the needles I could just knit up and see how how that goes and and not like not risk you know like if I don't like it cut it just not cut it just unravel it um, but then I haven't already cut this off and which is irretrievable then I have to I'll have to stick with whatever I do so yeah so or, I mean I could try the crochet chain now but that would mean taking this out it didn't take that long but I don't know I am curious to try it so I haven't done it yet because I've been doing so much other so many of my other um works in progress um this one sort of has just you know just gotten only a few rows on the arm so but I think I will give that a go it's not um and that shouldn't take too long so I might even I might even try that this afternoon I'm tomorrow I don't know maybe maybe that's a weekend thing maybe that's not a weekday thing I might play around with that um yeah I've got other stuff to do today I'm going to give that a go this weekend because I am you know I'm moving down all my works in progress which has been really nice so uh anything else I was going to say um no nope, I think that's it so yep really happy with it gosh I love this like I just love the pink and brown and I'm really glad that I swapped out the gray for the brown I think it's a lovely combination I and mean, it's very close to Andrea's so um and hers looks lovely so yep so that's um work in progress number three um work in progress number four is the field sweater by Camilla Vad and oh sorry oh man I really should pause when I do that I keep getting my hair caught in my needles all right so I am super happy. I actually did get this on, um, I did get this on like a large needle so I could try it on. I am, I think I'm on row something like 38. There's 43, yeah, there's 43 patterned rows in this and so I've got five more to go. So I'm almost there. I'm going to try it on because I just, I'm so happy with it. Right, let's see. So I chose the neckline, I chose the longer section of ribbing and I'm using Highland yarn, oh no sorry, Isia yarn, Highland wool is the, um, is the wool and um, they're silk mohair, they're both Isia yarn, silk mohair. This is rhubarb and this is a colorway number. Um, anyway, it'll be in the show notes and or and on links to my Ravelry page and everything. And that's still my first ball of each, right? So I'm not too, and I've got five more rows of like, you know, all of these grains and things. And then, then it's just gonna be stocking it in the round. I'm knitting the smallest size, which is a 37 inch bust, but my gauge is um, in stockinette is 20 stitches, no, 23 stitches over four inches. And the pattern gauge is 20. So it should end up at 32 inches, which is no ease for me. So that's my kind of goal. Um, I, if I think I need it a little bigger, if I'd like it a little bit bigger, I could do, after I finished all of this, I could do some raglan, like I could split, you know, and create some raglan increases, just a few down underneath the yoke, or I could add on a few extra stitches under the arms when I split off for the sleeves. So, you know, I'll just, I'll have a think about that when I when I get there, which is not far away. I should. I've been doing four, roughly four rows a day. That's been my to stay on track. Because to be honest, I don't. Um, I don't enjoy this kind of knitting as much, where you're actually really having to pay close attention. Um, like one of the really involved rows takes me about 30 minutes. So if I'm cabling and making grains and various things, that's a long time. Like that's not every row, but that feels, just feels like a slog when you're still on the same row and you're like 20 minutes in and I'm still going on this same row. And it doesn't feel like that with something like Exploration Station because I'm usually doing something else at the same time. Whereas with this, I'm not really doing anything else at the same time. With the simpler rows, I could watch a podcast, but with the cable rows and everything, I just, 
I need my attention on it and that's but it's worth it like it is so worth it I just love these I love these grains they're so pretty now um, what else am I doing I think um, yes it's not particularly hard but it is quite slow and it's quite fiddly one thing that I'm noticing about the pattern and I don't want to it's not so much a criticism it's just more like a um, an observation the pattern is fully written out and so it's not only does it not have charts, but it doesn't really even have a key. So even if something is not, even if something's not charted, usually there's like a key. So if there's cables, it will say like C4B and then somewhere else will explain what C4B is. But in the pattern, everywhere where there's a cable, it's, it's spelled out exactly what you do. Now, what that happens, because I actually, as a, as a teacher, I find the layout of the information really interesting like how how can it either help you or make it make it harder and I think with all of that information as you're reading through the row and really you could just go oh that's a cable three front or cable two back or whatever and you mentally know what that is without reading the whole thing you already have lost what that or that is before you get to the next thing so what I've been doing I haven't been charting it, but I've been writing every, not every row, but every row that has like a cable or something happening in it in code. So I'll just write C for cable, S for slip, um, G for grain. So G means make a grain. Um, you know, LG means make a lar large grain. And so then my row has like maybe 10 symbols or five things in it. C, S, C, um, knit three, G, knit one G or you know whatever something like that and then I can just look at one thing instead of like reading all of this text for the one row so that's something that I find quite interesting in just instructional design how to help someone I've got to take this off because it's actually quite warm here today um, help people to get the information and retain the information without you know without feeling like hang on let me go back to the start and what was I reading again it, it made me think about something. I'll just really quickly mention this. I sent a text message to my daughter to pick up a few things from the grocery store and I didn't put dashes next to them. I just put the list and I got to one like second last from the list and I wrote lamb mince and then underneath that I said if you can't find lamb mince just get beef mince and then underneath that I wrote frozen peas and as I wrote it I thought she's not going to remember that. There's no dash like or she's going to miss the frozen peas not because she's not reading it properly, it's just not well laid out. There's no dash next to every item. I stopped at a particular item and started talking about other stuff and then I added another item. And sure enough, she didn't even see the frozen peas because she gets home and she's, and I said, oh, she's like, mom, we've got no peas. And I said, well, but I told you to get it in the list. She's like, no, you didn't. So she didn't even read it. Didn't like, because then under the frozen peas, I said, thanks so much, love you, whatever. So once she sort of saw the bit about the lamb mints, get beef mints instead, she just didn't even read the rest of it because in her head, that was the end of the list and the rest was just mum sign off. So anyway, all of that to say, I find that actually quite interesting how it is that you, and even as I wrote it, I knew there was a problem with, and I thought, but I was rushing and I thought I need to go back and take that bit out and put that at the end and put dashes next to every item or numbers like one, two, three, four, five. I didn't. And of course she forgot it. Anyway, it wasn't the end of the world. We had shepherd's pie without frozen peas, which, you know, we lived, but it just, I find that really interesting. So anyway, that was something about the field sweater. If you're knitting it, I would actually recommend just taking those couple of minutes to code anything that is just um, a, a, not every row maybe but every row that's got sort of stuff going on you'll find it a lot easier to just look at that rather than reading the whole row okay last work in progress Sophie scarf um, so this is another petite knit pattern also with the um, Kim and Jonna's knit along and I'm knitting this out of Madeline Tosh pashmina in the colorway dust weaver that's all I've got left this is leftovers from a sweater that I, that I made um, I know I've got plenty. I'm, I've already, 
I'm knitting the large size. The large size normally goes up to 33 stitches, but because this is a sport weight yarn instead of a DK, I got up to 36. And I think that looks like it's gonna be the right length. And I'm on the decreases now, so I have been doing some walking. This is my walking knitting. I'm on the decreases now and I've got, um, I think I've got 24 stitches maybe now, so not too much. Um, let me see if I hold it like that. That's how much I've got left to go. So. Um, I don't know, I don't have like a, oh, I'll get this finished. You know, I'm not sort of, these kinds of knits similar to the muscle bra, they get finished when they get finished. Um, and I'll just start another one um, when it's finished. So I'm not really in a rush. It might be finished next week as well. And that's it for my works in progress. Right, so what has caught my eye? Um, I've got three things this week that have caught my eye. One is a shawl called the Destination Unknown Shawl by Cheryl Faust. And I saw that on Acorn Knits, um, who is Natalia, and she hasn't done a podcast in a little while, but she just did one recently. And um, yeah, she'd made this actually as a charity knit, which I think is just a, a beautiful gift for someone. And yeah, I thought, oh, I, I'm quite keen on that. It uses um, 550 meters of fingering weight yarn and 300 meters of spin cycle or some other kind of like, you know, you could use some kind of gradient yarn or whatever. And uh, yeah, it just looks really nice. So it's mosaic knitting to get that kind of effect. So thinking about that, I haven't even looked for yarn for that yet, but I'm hoping I might have something like that in my stash that might work. Uh, another thing that caught my eye was Hohi Locatelli's striped unicorn sweater. That just, she'd had a lot of pinks and, you know, cream in it and it just looked really pretty. So I thought, oh, okay, that's, um, you know, just mental note, I like that. And the other thing is a podcast that I just started watching, A Lovely Yarn with Amber. So I really enjoyed um, her video. I just watched her most recent one and subscribed. And yeah, I think I'll, like, I'll start watching her. She's doing the Ranunculus Knit Along with, um, with Fruitful Hands. And yep, yeah, so that's, they're the three things this week that have caught my eye. So I'm up to purchases and plans. I don't think I've made, I just think that's unbelievable. Another week with no purchases. Oh, oh. I don't, yeah, I think I haven't actually. There you go. It does happen. Um, so I'll go straight into straight into plans. So I haven't I haven't cast anything on new, but because I haven't, that's two weeks I think of not casting on anything new, I'm getting closer and closer to actually doing that. So I'm um, I'm going to knit the half and half wrap. I did all my working out, which I explained last week of what kind of edging treatment I was gonna do. And I'm just going to slip the first stitch with knit wise with the yarn in back so not not moving the yarn at all just like slip the stitch as if i was going to knit it move it over and then knit the next one it just snugs it up a little bit and yep that's what i'm going to do for and i'm going to be using pearl soho linen quill i think this is baby bird blue and um poppy poppy red which is kind of more orange but anyway I think those two are going to look really lovely and I haven't cast it on but that's coming soon especially because I just finished exploration station so I don't have a shawl on the needles I only have that little Sophie scarf so yes so that's coming um plan number two is camisole number four and that is um I'm going to knit it out of this knitting for olive pure silk yarn I've got as far as doing a gauge swatch this is knit in double rib. So I, I knew with this yarn, I used this yarn in a light pink for my cumulus tee and my gauge blew out like quite a bit. So I already went down a needle size to a 3.25 millimeter and I'm still too big. So instead of 25 stitches over four inches, I'm getting 23, 24, depending on where I measure it. So I'm definitely gonna go down to a three mil at a minimum, um, maximum. <laughs> that, I won't knit it on anything bigger than a three mil. Um, I might even go to a 2.75 mil. So I haven't, I haven't, I don't know if I want it. I don't know if I can be bothered knitting another whole swatch. I'll, well, that sounds a bit silly. Maybe I, um, I might just knit a little mini swatch on the three mil and see, I don't know. I, maybe I'll just, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just start knitting it on the three mil. I'm not sure. I should be a good girl and swatch. It didn't take that long. I'll, I'll maybe I'll knit one on the 2.75. And then if that's too tight, then I'll just do the three mil, whatever. I'll figure out the gauge, um, whatever it ends up being. Like, I, you know, you can make little modifications along the way, casting on less under the arms, not going as far when I've got like more to work with. Anyway, camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear. I'm definitely gonna make it. I'm going to do a swatch on a 2.75 mil. And if that's too tight, 
go to a three mil or it might be perfect. Another plan is I'm um, seeing I'm nearly finished that anchor summer shirt. I'm going to make another one out of this unbelievably gorgeous Habu bamboo, 100% bamboo. The drape on this is phenomenal. Which way is it? That way, I just love it. So um, this one is much um, larger in gauge than I was getting for the, the blue Cartier Espiga that I was using. And I want that. I really want this to be a nice drapey a drapey anchor summer shirt so a little bit bigger maybe you know a, an inch or two of positive ease so that's another plan another one is the stripe no sailor swift top by um oh, veronica lindberg and i'm going to use these two colors of rowan cotton glacé and i already i've knit like whole garments out of this before and i know my gauge is good so now I think about that, when I know my gauge is good, like I could just start it, right? I know exactly, I know what size to make. Anyway, um, that that will come soon. But I, I also have two, I still have two tops on the needle, so I kind of felt like I should get those done before I started another top. I'm going to make Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter, and I'm, Caitlin Hunter, yes, using Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in Nocturne. That's quite a bit darker than that's showing because the light's right on it. Um, and uh, Peach Bellini, so I'm excited about that. And I'll just be doing that with a, a twisted rib. I plan to make the Carnaby skirt, but this one I reckon is gonna be a while away. This is Rowan Felted Tweed DK. I'll be holding that double. And I think um, I think because that's a winter knit and it's you know coming into summer now, um, this, will, this is not, I'm not in a big rush for this one. But I do know with this, this is one because I knit it, it's knit quite densely, it's probably worth, this is one that I'll go really slowly with and just do a little bit at a time because I remember from the previous ones that I've knit, my hands hurt quite a bit because it's knit at such a tight gauge. So it's probably not a bad one for me to just start and just do a couple of rows here and there um, so that I don't have any like hand pain or whatever. Um, I'm also plan to make the uh, the Kutar top by Sari Nordland out of this gorgeous pink. I just remembered another what has caught my eye. Um, I'll say it in a second. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Sari Nordland pattern. So this is Sanders Garn Tin Lina, and I'm going to use that for the Kutar top. But I did have when I swatched for gauge, it was a little bit tight, so I just have to do a little bit of thinking about that before I start that. And I haven't, um, I haven't swatched this yet, but I did talk about this. This is La Bienna May Silk Mohair, and this is the um, linen quill in vintage Celadon that I had planned to use for my, um, for my uh, half and half wrap, but changed my mind. I do need to knit a swatch for this because I think I would quite like to make the Oslo sweater if these two go nicely. They, look, they go nicely together to me in front of me now, but. You know, you got to knit a swatch when you're holding two things together. Sometimes they look worse than like the two things look nice separately and not so nice together. So I'll be curious to see. Um, and I do, I quite like knitting swatches actually, especially when you're holding two different yarns together and you get to see like how they look. I think that's a really that I, I enjoy that. So I might just need a swatch for that just to knit it, and that would be for the Oslo sweater if it works. I don't quite have enough yarn, so I would just make it like. A little bit smaller maybe like it sounds a bit strange to make a really warm jumper so fitted i'll have a think about that i don't have heaps less yarn but i could make it maybe not so long anyway that's a thought and was there anything else um oh i still really really want to make the stripe hype sweater i've got, just got this thing for that pattern so i might that might be my purchase like break I might even, when we go to Japan, I might be able to find some yarn for that there. So I'll have a bit of a think about that. All right, so um, that's kind of it for my plans at the moment, which obviously I have a lot, but you know, yeah, I'm moving closer towards them. And now this is my um, hidden whips basket segment. I'm dun -da -da -da, I actually did over diet. So this is the skirt. Um, I'll see if I can find um, a picture of, and put up here of what the color it used to look like and then the color it went to after its first over dye, well actually second over dye, because the first dye didn't take at all because I didn't have the water hot enough. Then the second over dye, 
I one patch was too dark and then I used the eggplant um, so I'm gonna hold that up nice and close so it totally worked like it, there's no um, what do you call it there's no is that the wrong that's the wrong way <laughs> that's the in, uh, inside there's um, there's no nasty patches or anything like it. you can probably see a bit of shading but it's sort of nothing like outrageous um, and I think what I like about it actually is that it's quite dark but it's not black but the reason you can actually see you can see underneath that the dye hasn't sort of fully absorbed all the way into the skirt now that I'm holding it like when I'm holding it like that you can say oh there's a little bit of variation there but like not like the big blotch that was there last time there was a massive blotch so I just think this is so pretty it's like ribena like you know the juice ribena um i don't know if you have that in the us but it's a black currant juice and i already have a top in madeline tosh venetian that's sort of a lighter version of this that i think would go really beautifully and i can just see this with tights and boots and yes i'm excited so i'm so happy it worked it's gonna be a bit snug because i think it definitely felt it a little bit but it's not like not crazy so it's just got a little bit too much like a little bit more negative ease than i would like but it's gonna work especially you know i'll be wearing tights like black tights underneath so um you know it's not like um you won't see it's also because it's quite dense um you definitely won't see through it and yes so yay very happy with that now i just need buttons so i'm gonna go to spotlight tomorrow which is our big box store and see if i can get buttons that are gonna work if not, um, we have a really nice button shop in Newtown called All Buttons Great and Small. And um, I might, that's not too far from um, Skein Sisters. So I'll probably go there. If I don't find anything at Spotlight, I'll go there in two weeks time um, when I finish teaching at their yarn shop and go and see if I can find some buttons for that there. They have, it's an amazing shop. So um, if I don't find some at Spotlight, I'll definitely get some there. Right, so um, winding up now for all of the craft. Um, I haven't done any sewing or any other craft, but I've really been quite busy with my knits and I've been working things down. Um, and I don't, I don't see myself getting to zero. I'm not one of those people. I think I'll probably like, I don't know. Um, but it kind of feels like I might want to. I don't know, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be amazing if I could get down to zero? Oh, it actually makes me feel anxious thinking about it. Maybe get down to one. Like maybe I have to have a, a muscle bra or a Sophie scarf on the needles and then I'll, but then I would probably just have an explosion of cast-ons. So anyway, it would be interesting. Maybe I'd be, become more monogamous. It wouldn't work for me because, you know, like I'll, I'll get to the colour work thing and then I'll need some plain knitting for something or, anyway, boring, boring. Let me just, I'll move, <laughs> I'll move on. Um, so that's, so if I'm just gonna get into the personal stuff now where I talk a bit about like my, you know, week just gone and what my plans are coming up. So if you're signing off now, thank you so much for being here and um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Right, on to the personal stuff. Um, I had my hair done last Friday. So I record on Thursdays, had a, um, I don't, I never used to dye my hair. I think I went probably like 25 years without dyeing my hair at all. And I would have a haircut maybe every three years something like that, just to, you know, trim. And I'd go to the hairdresser with my hair washed and I wouldn't get it blow dried. I'd just say, can you have it trimmed please? You know, $15 and out I go. But a couple of years ago, it wasn't so much that I was going gray, but I just realized that I was not, um, not really looking after myself, I think. And that's not to say you need to get your hair dyed to look after yourself, but I think I was putting myself really far down the list of priorities and one of the big things about getting your hair done is you're, you're sitting at the salon for like four hours. No, no joke, four hours. So, and I remember like when the kids were little, I couldn't even get to the dentist, let alone get my hair dyed. Like I, I would be, I'd almost be in tears trying to figure out how do I get myself, like my husband's working so many hours and I've got to get a root canal and how am I, you know, or even just a filling, like what am I going to do with my three little kids? Um, so hairdresser forget about it so yeah but now my kids are all a bit older and I thought you know what it's time it's time to start you know being a little bit generous to myself so yeah so I did I had my I only I still only get it done twice a year which is um because I can't I just don't want to 
I want to spend that long on the hairdresser. So two times a year I get my hair um, coloured. And I, I think I didn't get it cut the last two times, so it probably does need a bit of a cut. So anyway, one day. But I don't want to get it cut at that hairdresser because it's like a bajillion dollars. They do a really nice job of the dye and I don't mind paying a little bit for that, but I don't want to spend that much money on the haircut there. So I'll, I'll get that done somewhere else where it's a bit cheaper. And I will go in with my hair washed and, <laughs> and say, can you just trim it please? Um, anyway, that's enough on my hair. Uh, what else? So I had a really quiet Saturday, which was lovely. And I just had to pick up Zach from K, my son Zach from KFC at 11. So that's kind of the, the latest that I can manage staying up. Um, oh, okay. Other things this week, Alex had her court date yesterday. So my daughter, Alex, she's 18. She'd only had her license for about three weeks. She was on her way to a job interview. She... I'm not trying to make excuses for her. You're not allowed to, in Australia, you're not allowed to use your mobile phone if you're on your P's, which is like your provisional license. You can't use it at all for maps or anything. So she was on her way to a job interview and I don't think she really knew she wasn't allowed to use it for that. She knew she wasn't allowed to touch her phone, she wasn't allowed to text, but she thought if I just have it on maps and I have it on the passenger seat, I'm not doing anything wrong and I can just sort of look over and see, yes, I'm on the right road or whatever. Well, there was like a camera overhead that saw that she was on a P-plate and she had a phone lit on the passenger seat and she got pulled over and she got a fine and then she was going to lose her license. And so we had a court date yesterday to try to like reduce the suspension. And anyway, she, the magistrate was really nice. She did a traffic offenders course, which I think was actually really helpful for her because it just highlighted to her even the smallest amount of distraction what can happen in that little period of time because you're like driving blind while you're looking at the phone so she did learn something from it and the magistrate was lovely and she ended up not losing her license at all and I don't think she's like oh, sweet got out of that she you know she's she's quite aware that she's that's she wouldn't get that grace again next time so yeah so she's um still driving and everything's fine and yeah, she didn't lose her license, which is which is a good thing. So I'm really relieved for her and for myself. So we're not, you know, having to drive her to work for the next month. Uh, other than that, the only other things that we've been doing is um, in the evening, I watch a bit of um, television with my husband in not so much during the week, but on like Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. And we've been watching this show called Mayor of East Town with Kate Winslet. And it's so good. Uh, we finished watching it and I loved it. She's great. She's such an amazing actress. So it was really, really interesting. Really um, a lot about, you know, there's a fair bit in there about grief and healing. And yeah, it was, it was a really good, um, there's, there's a fair bit of loss in the show. So I'd just be aware of that maybe going in. But um, yeah, it was really good. And she's amazing. The other thing we just started watching was Beckham. Um, just out of interest, sort of like, it's quite... I don't know, I'm knitting while I'm watching it, so I don't really, uh, I don't mind. It's, I could probably watch about half of it. It is kind of interesting though, though, just the kind of life that David Beckham and Victoria Beckham has, um, I don't know what her maiden name was, Posh Spice. Yeah, anyway, it's been enjoyable. We've still got one, I think there's four episodes, we've got one to go. So that's it for what's been happening this week coming up. Tonight, um, my son, Zach, he, um, in, at school, so he's in year 10 at school and he's in like, he's in the choir, but he's also in this thing called CMP where they have like little mini bands. And tonight they have like a few of the bands where they're all performing. So it's not a, it's not a big deal. It's not like a big in the hall. It's a very small little intimate, um, but he's, he's going to be singing, um, I think, um, Mm, a Pink Floyd, I think they're singing Money by Pink Floyd. I'm not sure what else. So I'll be watching that tonight. Um, I don't think my husband can come. I'll just I'll video that for him. He's got a work call. So I'll be watching that tonight. So that will be good. Um, oh, something funny coming up that's not for me, but my husband is going to see Def Leppard and Motley Crue on Saturday night with my brother. <laughs> he asked me if I wanted to come. <laughs> I was like, no way that is so not my jam but my brother loves that kind of stuff and he lives about four hours away so he's driving up for the weekend and, and my husband and my brother are going to go watch that and i'll probably just watch i think i might watch julia on netflix you know julia child that's something that he was so sweet i asked him if he wanted to watch it and he was like um if you really want to <laughs> 
like, no, it's fine. I'll watch it by myself. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll be doing that, I think, on Saturday night. I'm curious to, watch, to start watching that. Other things coming up. Uh, we are going to Japan in about a month, a month from tomorrow, so very excited about that. I have to start thinking about um, what knitting to take with me. I did find that in Kyoto, where we're staying, there's a yarn shop two kilometres away um, called Walmart, which is the connected to Amarisu magazine. And I'm pretty sure Relax, the, you know, the Relax sweater, I've knit five of those I showed in a previous um, episode those that's from Amarisu uh yeah so anyway I'm really curious to go there it's on if it's only two k's away from where we're staying I'm definitely going there I checked to make sure we're actually in Kyoto for four days so um there's not going to be an issue of it's shut on the day we're there or whatever there is another shop called Avril but they seem to have like a lot of novelty kind of yarns and I don't knit with a lot of that so and it's also quite a bit further away it's about five or six kilometers away so I'm not sure that we'll make it there. If there's something else nearby, I might, but I'm definitely gonna to go to Walnut. And yeah, so I have to think about my travel knitting plans. Now, when I travel, I tend to not like to do anything that is a garment. I just, I don't want anything where I'm gonna to have to try it on. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'll have like a Sophie scarf and a muscle, I'll start a new muscle bra. I haven't done one of those in a while. And I'm thinking maybe dotted rays. So I really enjoyed making my dotted rays and um, I have some yarn, oh, I'll show it next time. It's kind of like, it's Tosh Marino, oh, is it Tosh Marino Light? If it's not, no, it's not Tosh Marino Light, but it's very similar. It's a fingering weight four ply and it's got this, it's mostly gray with a little bit of pink in it and I have two skeins. So um, I could have put that in my upcoming plans, but anyway, I'll show it next week and I've made dotted rays before and that's the other thing too. I quite like a repeat knit. So yeah, so that's my upcoming plans. Anyway, I think that's it for the week. Um, I will. I have been doing quite a few field sweater videos. I've just finished one on the large grain, so making the large grain and collapsing that. So I used a crochet hook for that actually. So I'll be posting that during the week. And I'll also do one on um, the duplicate stitch for the anchor summer shirt. So yep. If you've been here to the end, thanks so much for watching. And if you're returning, thanks so much for coming back. And if you're new here, I hope you enjoyed it and you'll come back again. And yeah, if you could do the like and subscribe thing, that would be really lovely. And I'll see you next week. Bye.